I'm Alice Finch, and this year at BrickCon, I brought a microscale version of Berg Elts. Um, it is a castle that has been owned by the same family for over 800 years. At one point, it was besieged, but it was never destroyed, so it's in incredibly good condition. Um, I've had the chance to visit it twice, actually, and um, one of the reasons why I wanted to build it is because it has such an interesting mix of styles. There's a lot of stonework, but even the stonework is varied from one side to the other. And even the roofs are particularly challenging, and the fact that it creates a very lopsided circle, and almost all of it is off stud. And so that is really hard to do when you're trying to make it all work together in the angles. So um, it's all based on photos that I took myself or a couple postcards uh, just from visiting it. Yeah, that's amazing. So if you want to take us through and show, you mentioned the different kinds of stonework, maybe the, the, how, that, how that changes within the build here? Yeah, sure. So for example, this here, the dark gray, I used um, tiles and jumpers to make the little grooves because it's actually a slate tiles in this section here. Almost all of it is this, what, what we would use as plates, but this castle itself uses very small stones, not huge chunks of stone like you sometimes imagine and so that's why I plate built it. Um, one of the favorite things is these actual drill bits for the towers. Uh, round is always hard, um, especially in micro scale, so in this case the drill bit pieces worked really perfectly for that. Um, another thing is in the back here you've got a lot of the white, sometimes there's stucco and uh, towers. Um, a lot of people ask, well why did you make the back building all tan well because that's the way it is and even on the the plate stone I tried to make the color matching just the right way because sometimes there's places where it uses a lot more darker stone than the lighter stone so we even tried to um, use more brown in the places where it is darker in the actual castle so. mm -hmm. that's really neat and when you're starting on a, a build like this where you're trying to depict it realistically wh where did you start with this and then did you kind of like build out from a certain spot Yes, I did. So um, I started with this section here with the uh, corner towers because it's one of the places where it starts on stud, um, but it also is a transition in elevation. So one of the other challenges is that <coughs> because it is a true medieval castle, they just built wh whatever the natural stone was. The first floor is not the same all the way across. So I had to basically work my way around and make sure that the first floor ended up being the first floor all the way around. So I started there and then kind of adjusted as I went. Okay. And I know you've built a lot of uh, medieval, you know, castle type builds and stuff. What tips would you give to people who might be interested in this type of building and want to do more, more of this type of building in the future? So in this case, I uh, determined the scale based on some critical parts. Um, and those were the uh, corner towers because there just aren't that many options. So it either had to be a one by one, a two by two, or a four by four. And so that determined sort of the scale of it. Um, so if you're going to do a microscale building, pick something that is the most difficult part, do that first, and then everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good advice. And I noticed down here we've got the, the little trophy right here. What is this trophy for? Um, I wasn't here at award ceremony last night, so I don't actually know myself. It says, <laughs> Best Medieval Building. There you okay, go. There you go. So awesome. That's Congratulations important. on that. Yes, that's really cool. And this is such an awesome build. I think it turned out great. Thank you. Thank you.